Ducks football, 1080 The Fan. Pacific Office Automation, problem solved. Welcome back to the Pacific Office Automation post-game scoreboard show. The Oregon Ducks winners tonight in the marquee matchup of the season to date. 32-31, the Ducks beat the Buckeyes in the biggest game in Autzen Stadium history. It was back and forth. It was heart-stopping at times, but ultimately the Ducks come away with uh, one of the most memorable victories in the history of the program. And uh, we're going to continue to digest it here on the post-game show. We'll get to Andy Dirt Johnson and Dusty Hera coming up. But I uh, want to talk with you, Will, uh, a little bit more just about your analysis of, of how this all came to be. Because we'll get to the point later where we talk about all the things the Ducks did to kind of shoot themselves in the foot and put them el- put themselves in a spot where it was going to be rough to pull one out. But they, they found a way. And so... I want to keep going back to the people who deserve credit for this because today it felt like it was such a collective effort from so many people. Right. And I think one of the places that I want to start, want to ask what you saw was with the coordinators. I worried this week going in if if Oregon would be at a coordinator disadvantage just from a from an experience standpoint. I thought mm-hmm. Chip Kelly against Tosh Lapoy. Tosh has been great for us. Fantastic recruiter been really great with what he's done with our D line but but Chip is a Chip is a pro Chip is aces Chip is a top OC right. for a reason and then I I just thought about Will Stein again just young hasn't played it or hasn't coached in many of these big spots going against the Jim Knowles defense who's been around the block he's played in these games before and I thought both of these coordinators maybe they didn't have a perfect game but I thought they did an exceptional job getting the most out of their mm-hmm. personnel on, on defense you mentioned earlier making sure that there weren't big plays right uh, getting behind the entire defense, figuring out a way to keep things in front of them while also coming up with some stops. But just from a coaching perspective, what did you see today, X's and O's standpoint? The biggest thing for me, I think, is how this defense handled a sudden adversity that you didn't expect. You expected to have Jordan Birch going into this game, and all of a sudden on Thursday, he gets hurt, right? And instead of burning everything, oh, we're in trouble, the sky is falling, what does Lapoy do? Well, he turns to his younger players, he turns to Uyungle, he turns to Tatum Tuioti, and he says, hey, we have to put you in a position to where you can be successful. And I knew going into this game, and a lot of other talking heads had talked about this, but Chip had left a lot of Will Howard's running ability and read option ability on the table because he didn't need it against other teams, mm-hmm. but he knew he was going to need it against this team. And consistently, what Howard did and what Kelly did is they would look to attack the young defensive linemen of the Ducks. And the reason they were doing this is because they wanted to make them look at Howard, see, hey, there's the quarterback. He's got the ball big and juicy. I can charge after him. Now I've left my gap and Howard can hit a shovel pass underneath. underneath. Or that allows him to step into a throw on a slant over to Ibukum, right? Or whatever they had set up around it. And play in, play out. Tatum and Uyangale did not fall for that. They did their job. Now, did that necessarily mean that they got a lot of tackles, especially in Tuioti's case? No, right? You look at Tuioti's stat line, three tackles, one solo. A lot of people who didn't watch that game are going to go, eh, who cares? Why are you talking about Tatum Tuioti? Tatum Tuioti did his job and trusted that the other Ducks would do theirs and stop Howard, and they did play after play after play. And then Mateo Uyungle gets the nice little cheap sack where he slides down and he gets the detachment. Sure. Right? But yeah, I feel you, though, because it, it does it, – it felt like the kind of game where – as I was watching it, I kept thinking what a great job the defensive line was doing, keeping containment, mm-hmm. getting pressure, making Howard uncomfortable, and and they weren't racking up big sacks tonight. I mean, like you, you, you had, had one, Uyungle, like, you had one where he fell down, but mm-hmm. they absolutely affected the game, and I think I think that's where, a, as a fan, we need to hear from someone like you who could appreciate or kind of yeah. paint the picture for us uh, of just how impressive it was, even though you're not going to see it in the numbers. And then and then offensively, what did you think just about? about Will Stein's game plan and the way that he used his, his different tools that he had at his disposal. I love that Stein didn't give up on the run game. I felt like this would have been an easy spot, especially when Ohio State comes out and scores right away and kind of takes the crowd out of it. Then you go and you go three and out really quickly and you have to punt the ball back to Ohio State. It could have been very easy in that moment for Stein to go, well, we got to throw, we got to get a big play, got to do... No, what does he do? He trusts his offensive line. And what I really liked is... 
he was letting Jordan James get into space on those quick boundary side tosses. So all that he's doing there is he's having his left tackle pull out and around. He's trusting Ferguson to have a down block. And it's essentially a stretch play with a with a pitch. So it's a true pin and pull down block, get the offensive lineman out and moving. The left tackle did a fantastic job of just letting the linebacker choose where he wants to be. You want to be outside? That's fine. I'm going to take you to the stands. You want to be inside? That's fine. I'm going to pin you inside. And then Jordan James did an amazing job of reading that and then running up into the second and third levels and then lowering his shoulder and running through the secondary of Ohio State. How many times do you see Caleb Downs get ran over? That doesn't happen, but Jordan James was doing it time in and time out. But that's Will Stein understanding what kind of personnel he has, how he can attack that Ohio State defense and out leverage them to a spot, and then trusting that his athletes will make the play. Whenever they needed a big play, I felt like, it, especially when it came to being on the ground, it was off of some sort of pin and pull where you could get those offensive linemen, specifically your left tackle, out in space and then let Jordan James do the rest. I want to get to some of your fan uh, Vancouver Ford fan text line thoughts as well. One person uh, mentioning that one play that's not talked about enough is the botched extra point attempt in the first quarter. Ohio State could have easily ran that all the way back for two points, and that would have potentially decided the game. Absolutely. There, there were things that, that both of these teams did, points left out there, and, and <sighs> man... Oregon was lucky that they got away with one there because a- after you made the mistake of not being able to get the the hold down, yeah, you almost made that mistake a whole lot worse by just gifting them with two, with, with two with points. Two. And, yeah. and credit to the guys who were behind that play that that chased down. Uh, I think it was Ransom who who grabbed that ball. I'm not sure who mm-hmm. for Ohio State, but um, really important that they stopped that from happening also um one person saying that they have aged 10 years in a matter of four hours tonight <laughs> I, I said something similar at halftime I, I think i tweeted it that I, I felt like i went through an entire season's worth of emotions in just 30 minutes of football that there's uh, so much going on to, to, to the process i'll tell you this right now um if you're a duck fan uh, you should probably go get your physical Go get checked up <laughs> if you need to go get cholesterol pills. Or yeah, like I need to else. really go to the real doctor, yes. not the football doctor. But yeah. no, no, go, Good God. go, go to a real doctor, one that has an MD in their name, not in their Twitter handle. My like blood I pressure, do. okay? Yeah, go get checked out because I the way this duck team is playing, unfortunately, you're going to be in a lot of these games. And I say unfortunately, tongue in cheek, because you have a really good football team that. As long as you take care of business, you'll be playing for a Big Ten championship. You could possibly be playing for a bye going into the playoffs. You could be playing in a quarter, in a semi, in a final. This is a really good football team. There is a lot of improvement and room for improvement for this team, which you want. Because it's October. No one's ever won a national championship on October. They've always won it in December and in January. You have a team that has the potential to do that if they can continue to improve and, of course, stay healthy. So, prepare for that. Maybe go get a physical. Go get checked up by your doctor. Take take your medicine if you need it. Well, the other thing that this game does, this win does in the broad view, and, and maybe it's a little bit funny to frame it this way, but... It really gives you some breathing room in the whole playoff situation because it does. This, this is this is the type of game that a year ago might have been punching your ticket to the four or or, or making keeping your hopes of making it to the fourteen playoff alive. Right now, this allows you a hiccup. Like you're you're probably obviously you're on the inside track for the Big Ten championship game. But even if you were now to stumble, let's say against Michigan and Wisconsin, you can still find a path. Th- this game. I, I want to say all but locks you into the 12 team playoff I, I, unless something horrific happens. I wouldn't go that far. What I would say that this does is it it puts you in a spot to where you can guarantee it later in November. Sure. That is what I would say. Because the minute that you start saying, well, now we're in the playoffs. Lo- I shouldn't say locked Be- in, but what again, wiggle room. It, it, it gives you right. the, it gives it, you a loss that you didn't expect is okay now. It gives you it gives you some freedom. Because I'll tell you right now, obviously this Ohio State team isn't out, but you know who said that same thing two weeks ago? Alabama. Yeah. And if Alabama had lost to South Carolina today, I don't know that Alabama gets into the 12-team playoff, and that's if they run the table the rest of the way because that's a di- very diff- difficult schedule. So I think we see the 12-team playoff, and then we just look and, oh, well, they've won two big games. They're going to be fine you're probably going to be fine. But Illinois is no slouch. 
Nope. Michigan is no slouch. You're going to go to Wisconsin, and you're going to have to deal with Wisconsin November weather. And then let's call a spade a spade here. Yeah, it's not the same UW team as last year. Still a rival. It's a rivalry game, and it's a UW team that nothing would mean more to them than ruining your season. You still got a long, long, long way to go. But I had a college football coach when I played at Central Washington that used to call it Rocktober. You got to rock October to play meaningful games in November. Yep. And right now, that's what you've did. You've put yourself in the driver's seat. You control your own destiny. The rest of the teams out there, they don't necessarily control their own destiny. And right now, I think you have a legitimate argument to say we should be the number one team in the country. And that's got to feel pretty damn good.